number five, Eddie Gray. Water parks are supposed to be safe and fun environments, but the pools are not always free of bacteria. In the case of Eddie Gray, his day of relaxation in the water led to his untimely death. Gray was a 59-year-old devout Methodist Christian who was enjoying a trip with his congregation. They decided to visit Fantasy Lake Water Park in North Carolina. He jumped into the water several times and returned home without any issues. Unbeknownst to him, the deadly bacteria were already traveling up his nasal cavity. He began experiencing stiffness in his neck, headaches, and high fever. Ten days after visiting the water park, he was declared dead. The disease was discovered post-mortem and he'd suffered from an infection produced by a brain-eating amoebae. Gray had been married for 32 years to his wife Beverly and left behind a daughter and two young grandchildren. The family's lawyer requested the public to allow his relatives to grieve peacefully. The park didn't make any immediate declarations after Gray's death and ended up denying any wrongdoing. That being said, they did caution visitors of potential risks. They had an advisory message on their website which read, there is a low level of Nagleria filari risk when entering any warm freshwater. Gray passed away in July of 2019 and as of the making of this video, no lawsuit has been filed against Fantasy Lake Water Park. Nagleria fowleri, popularly known as the brain-eating amoebae, is a deadly microorganism which causes a lethal type of brain infection called amoebic meningoencephalitis. Technically, the brain-eating amoebae isn't even really an amoebae, but rather a shape-shifting amoeboflagellate, which has three different stages of growth. It begins as a simple cyst, which is generally harmless until the next stage in its life. It then evolves into the flagellate, which can be introduced into the human body through the nose. This usually occurs when people swim in waters infested with these bacteria. Once inside, this lethal creature continues to evolve into the shape of a trophozoite. It has an ingenious way of moving up its victim's nasal cavity, lacking any limbs. The brain-eating amoebae expands specific sectors of its cell's membrane. It then loads them with plasma, effectively floating up towards the brain. Most commonly, it affects young boys under the age of 13 and is lethal in almost every single case. A popular myth is that you can get infected with these deadly bacteria by drinking contaminated water. This is not true. The only way for it to reach your brain is for it to be introduced into the body through the nose. Number four, Lily Mae Avant. 10-year-old Lily Mae Avant and her family had decided to enjoy a nice swim at the Brazos River during Labor Day. It was only a short ride from their home at Valley Mills and it seemed like a harmless day of fun. Two days later, Avant began suffering from intense headaches and a high fever. The school nurse called her parents, who immediately took her to the Cook Children's Hospital in Fort Worth. By the next day, the young girl was unresponsive and the doctors didn't know what was causing her condition. The medical professionals conducted a series of different tests on Avant, like a spinal tap and a CT scan. She was treated for bacterial meningitis in an attempt to save her life. It quickly became evident that the diagnosis had been wrong. Finally, they were able to determine the real cause behind her condition. They informed the family she'd contracted primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. By then though, it was too late to help the young girl. There was nothing the doctors could do to reverse the situation. Avant died in the hospital a week after the initial symptoms and was the 147th registered victim of this deadly disease in the US. The brain-eating amoebae usually resides in lakes and rivers, as well as hot springs. It thrives solely on warm fresh waters. This means that they can't survive in gelid rivers, ponds, or in salt water. This bacterium has also been found in the liquid discharges draining out of industrial plants. More dangerous still, they can live in swimming pools, which is why it's so essential to chlorinate them often. Traces of brain-eating amoebae have also been discovered in tap water. It tends to linger around the bottom of bodies of water, lurking in the muddy soil. When people swimming around disturb the water, the Nagleria filari floats around and may find its way into the victim's nose. Though they naturally prefer to feed off other bacteria in the sediment, they won't hesitate to feed off their new host. 
as the human body is moist and hot, just like the water the brain-eating amoebae lives in, it's the perfect habitat to thrive in. They can be found in the southern states of the US, in Florida and Texas, and are particularly common during the hotter seasons. The truth of the matter is that however lethal this bacteria might be, it's infrequent for a person to become its victim. There are few documented cases, but regretfully, more than 97% of those incidents end up in death. Number 3. Ryan Perry Ryan Perry, as a jet skiing enthusiast, most likely never imagined that his hobby would bring him to the brink of death. The 30-year-old man fell off his jet ski one day and thought nothing of it. Water got into his nose, but he didn't get injured, so he just kept on with his regular routine. A few days later, though, he began feeling violently ill and was rushed to the hospital. He was one of the few lucky survivors, since doctors managed to diagnose him in time. Perry was forced to spend three months in the hospital to overcome the consequences of the brain-eating bacteria. He was induced into a coma in order to manage his symptoms and the pain he was suffering. Perry also endured two more months of rehab. As of the release of this video, Perry has yet to be able to walk on his own. The doctors expect him to make a full recovery in time. To be able to fund his treatment, Perry's family set up a GoFundMe request with a goal of $50,000. Contrary to popular belief, this amoebae won't actually kill you by eating your brain. As the organism attacks your brain cells for its next meal, it inevitably causes an infection. The human immune system immediately reacts to it. This in turn results in the brain swelling, which is incredibly dangerous in and of itself. The skull cannot expand in order to allow the brain to swell appropriately and fight off the infection. This in turn raises the cranial pressure and can cause the spinal cord to become detached from the brain. Communication with other vital organs is massively disconnected and it can become hard for the victim's body to fulfill routine tasks like breathing or swallowing. The first symptoms of this condition seem like just the usual flu. They include fever, intense headaches, nausea and general weakness. Even if the patient requested immediate medical attention, the chances of survival are still extremely low. Quickly, the infection will spread and make the victim experience neck pain, disorientation, seizures and even hallucinations. Death occurs incredibly fast. Most victims of this horrible disease die only a week after experiencing the first symptoms. Worse still, it's incredibly hard to diagnose this condition fast enough and it's often confused with other illnesses. By the time a doctor figures out what's going on, it's usually already too late to do anything about it. There are no known medications to fight the amoebae, so doctors attempt to treat the symptoms instead. Today's video was requested by Big Clues. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comment section below. Number 2. Lauren Seitz 18-year-old Lauren Seitz was visiting the U.S. National Whitewater Center with members of her congregation when disaster struck. The center was only one of the stops in their trip, and nothing seemed amiss when the church group decided to go for a swim. Their fun continued for three more days, as they visited several other locations. Everything seemed to be fine until the teenagers returned home. When Seitz arrived back in Ohio, she began feeling ill and feverish. She was taken to the hospital where doctors would take too long to diagnose her. It seemed like just a bad case of the flu at first, but kept getting worse with time. Eight days after the symptoms started, the teenager passed away in the hospital. The doctors determined she'd been infected by the rare brain-eating amoebae, Nagleria fowleri. Sites family sued the center, arguing that the waters at the park were filthy and often used for rafting-related activities. A settlement was reached out of court for an undisclosed amount of money. The park continued to deny responsibility but seemed eager to avoid further negative publicity. As previously mentioned, there are no known medications for the infection caused by this microorganism. So the best way to survive the brain-eating amoebae is to avoid it getting in your body altogether. If you go swimming in lakes or rivers, especially during the summer, it's a great idea to wear nose clips. This way the bacteria can't reach your brain. You can drink the water safely as it won't affect you in any way, even if the amoebae is present in the area. If you don't have any nose clips with you, 
Keep your head out of the water and avoid jumping into it or diving deep. Another tip is to keep the muddy soil on the bottom of the lake or river alone. Don't stir or kick it, as that will send any lingering amoebae floating all around you. Remember though that this bacterium can also be found in tap water, so be sure to put plenty of chlorine in your pools to keep them safe. If you happen to perform nasal flushes on yourself or your loved ones, be careful. Don't use water directly from the tap. It may be contaminated by the brain-eating amoebae, and you'd be giving it a direct path into your brain. Sterile water or saline solution work just as well and are entirely safe. There's some good news though, as the odds of actually contracting this bacteria are very low, an estimated 1 in 70 million. It's also true that if you are unlucky enough to become one of its victims, your chances of survival are minimal as well. Official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. Some of it is to die for. Number 1. 13-year-old survives brain-eating amoebae attack. Callie Hardick was enjoying the toboggans in a local water park, as any average 13-year-old would during the summer. She never suspected she'd contract a deadly bacterium that could have ended her life in a matter of days. Like other victims before her, Hardick began feeling sick, suffering from intense headaches and nausea. Her mother thankfully rushed her to the hospital when she saw that her condition was worsening. The doctors were able to almost immediately discover the source behind her symptoms. They informed the girl's parents that Hardick was suffering from a rare form of meningitis. This condition could only be caused by the brain-eating amoebae and immediate action had to be taken. The early diagnosis was the main reason why Hardick survived an infection that kills 97% of all people who contract it. She was hospitalized for weeks and had to endure several treatments to overcome her illness. Hardick was eventually able to return home to her parents, making a full recovery. The doctors expected she wouldn't suffer from further complications. The young girl remained terrified of water for a while, unable to take baths or showers. Her parents helped her through the process and took her to several doctors. In time, Hardig managed to put the whole ordeal behind her. Before long, she started taking regular swims in her backyard pool. Still, the teenager said that she'd never forget the terrible experience that she'd lived through. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be infected by brain eating amoebae or face death by a thousand cuts? Let us know in the comments section below.